Welcome to the Monday Mailbag. Today's question comes from David, asking, what about the use of seismic geophysics in our exploration programs? Well, David, it's a good question, uh, and it's a timely question. Seismic geophysics basically measures how seismic waves travel and are reflected through the ground, which can shed light on things like the depth of bedrock, uh, places where one type of bedrock meets another type of bedrock, and the locations of structural features like faults and folds. All of these things can be very helpful for exploration, uh, but traditionally the cost to lay out miles and miles of cable uh, connecting all the sensors that are required, and then to bring in the energy sources to provide the seismic waves to measure, uh, usually large thumper trucks or explosives, uh, has been very expensive. In the last few years, however, there's been a, a step change in how the technology works largely towards now using wireless sensors with much better batteries such that these instruments can stay on and listen long enough to be able to use ambient seismic energy, uh, such as small earthquakes, uh, industrial activity, other types of energy sources, uh, rather than needing to provide active sources. By removing the need for both cables uh, and energy sources, this has drastically reduced the cost of the method. And as you would guess, it's starting to be used much more around the world for all sorts of commodities. Here is an example of a drone that the world's largest mining company, BHP, is working on in order to be able to deploy these sensors remotely. And not surprisingly, here in Nevada, there's other groups that are interested in applying the method for looking for large new Carlin-type gold deposits in the half of the state that sits there undercover. But up until now, no one has uh, invested the time or the money to test the method in a place where there's already been some deep drilling and a number of other geophysical surveys completed in order to try and tie all these data sets together. Working with industry and academic partners, we've agreed to provide South Grass Valley as a test case where we cover some modest deployment costs and more importantly provide the several millions of dollars of data that we've collected at the project in exchange for the industry and academic groups providing the data processing and some of the interpretation. Working together, we laid out a passive survey at South Grass Valley designed to use the seismic energy created at Cortez at the mine to the north to basically activate our array of sensors. Last month, the equipment arrived in Reno and we deployed the sensors across the project where they happily stayed collecting data over the holidays until we retrieved them a few days ago. The data from the units will soon be downloaded and then sent to our industry partners for processing. And in the coming months, we're hoping to be able to see some initial outputs. As this hasn't ever been done before in this exact type of setting, and we're all very keen to see what sort of information and resolution we get. We're optimistic we should get some good depth to bedrock information uh, we're also hoping we get some deeper information that helps us better map how the Water Canyon Structural Corridor cuts through the district. And most interestingly, from a research perspective, we're going to be looking at can we help pinpoint places, fluid pathways, where mineralized hydrothermal fluids may have traveled through the district, uh, potentially depositing their gold into the surrounding bedrock. Um, so we see a lot of potential with the method. Uh, we're excited to be partnering with the world's leading experts on the subject, but it is a research project. Uh, the outcomes are not guaranteed, uh, but what we know about similar projects that have been done in similar settings, uh, we're certainly uh, very optimistic that we're going to get some useful information that better helps us understand the architecture of our target. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.